In today's video, we're checking out a switcher that can pretty much do everything when it comes to the audio and video side. We're gonna do a deep dive review of this AV Matrix live switching system. Let's get into it. Welcome back folks, this is Shane. In today's video, we're taking a look at this AV Matrix switching system, which is extremely powerful, not only on the video side, but also on the audio side. If you already subscribed to the channel, you might know I've reviewed a lot of different switches. Their main Achilles heel is the fact that you can't mix audio from a lot of the channels or the inputs that you've got going on. So this will allow you to do that, which is fantastic. So if you're looking for something that would be perfect for gaming, podcasting, or any type of event, this will definitely do that because you can incorporate more than one audio source. So fantastic there. You can also run it directly out of something like the Rodecaster Pro into the AV Matrix and then off sync the audio. So I thought I'd mention that first because that's something that a lot of these type of units don't do. I think AV Matrix got that right with this. It's very, very functional and also very powerful. As always, I'm gonna leave some timestamps in the description of this video, as well as links through to AV Matrix, so you can skip ahead or back and forth if you so choose, or also check these out online. Now, full disclosure, AV Matrix have sent this out for the review. I didn't buy it, they're not paying me in addition to letting me hold onto this if I so choose to, nor do they get to preview this video ahead of time. So any opinions on this will be my own through my own experience using it. First of all, I'm gonna show you the inputs and outputs on the unit starting from left to right. So we have two microphone analog 3.5 millimeter inputs that also double as line level inputs. We then have four HDMI inputs, which is pretty common on these units. We have a multi-view out and a program out. This is fantastic. So I'm gonna show you the difference between the program and the multi-view. As you can see, looking at the multi-view out, we get four smaller boxes on the lower left side which will allow us to preview all of the inputs in real time. Above that is the preview window, which we can switch to. I'll get to that in just a moment. And then you get the program view, which is essentially this one, which goes out to the audience. So as you can see, everything's nice and simple. One of the things that clearly makes this far more powerful is the fact we get a program button selection across the top, so we can instantly change scenes just by pushing a button or we can queue up the preview selection here as well. So we are currently got the program set to three, which is this camera over here. If we wanna to go to two, we can queue it up and we'll see that on the multi-view. And then when I use the transition bar, boom, it just goes straight to that one. And as you can see, we can go back and forth between these two just by using this. Now you don't have to use the transition bar either. You can just simply tap buttons on the unit and it will switch views. So already this makes it far more powerful than a lot of the other units I've reviewed so far. Not only does the AV Matrix switcher work with open broadcaster software, it's also detected as a webcam thanks to this USB-C output. Now one of the cool things is if you've got a PC for example, you can control this via the PC software. I've actually hooked this up and it works fine with my PC but being that I've got a Mac right here, there's no software available for it right now, but that may change down the track. So you don't need it though. One of the best things about this is the menu is fantastic and you can access everything via the menu on the unit. As long as you've got the multi-view hooked up, it makes it really easy to see what you're doing. We get a GPIO connection right here for a tally and that is our 12 volt in power supply. On this side of the unit, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a USB port. Now this USB port is designed to just be used to update the firmware to the unit. To do that, you have to plug a USB stick directly into the AV matrix, then power it on and it will go through this double reboot process where it upgrades the firmware and the multi-view out will let you know that it's doing that process and if it does it successfully. I had no problems with that whatsoever. One of the cool things about the AV Matrix when it comes to the HDMI input sources, it can handle pretty much anything from 576p all the way up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. I'm gonna leave a list of the supported frame rates on screen as it pretty much supports anything from 23.98, 24, 25, 29.97, 30, 50, 59.94, and 60 frames at 1080p. So it doesn't do 4K, but it supports just about everything you throw into it. When it comes to the multi-view and program output, the only supported output resolution is 1080p or 1080i. It doesn't do 720 out. So if you want that, you'll have to set it up via OBS. The HDMI color space is RGB and YUV. 
but the USB capture out is MJPEG at 1080p up to 60 frames per second, and that's pretty much common. Now, if you're a gamer, you're gonna love the fact you can output this at 60 frames per second. So there's a number of really powerful features built directly into this unit and it works seamlessly. The first one is dual picture in picture. So for example, if I go over to input number three, which is the overview of the unit, we can then hit picture in picture one and two. Then if we take a look at the multi view, I can see that both of them are on screen, but they're not going out to the program view yet. So we hit the on air button and boom, there I am on the left and there's the second one. Additionally, we can select logo support as well and then do the same thing, put it on air and we can change this and it supports a lot of different pictures and so forth and, and file types, but we get a logo support at the touch of a button, which I really like. You can reposition all of this stuff as well and resize the picture in picture. You only get three different sizes when it comes to the picture in picture and I'll show you that right now. Now by using the built-in menu function, we can scroll down to upstream key and then picture in picture options and we can change the picture in picture size from one quarter. So I'll put this on screen so you can see exactly what's going on. We can change it from one quarter to one half. So much, much bigger, which is pretty great. And then you can also make it far smaller. So this is really cool. And then you can also change the position of it in the space as well. So if you wanna change the X, which is side to side, you can do that. And as you can see, you can actually set a number and recall it easily if you so choose. And then we can change the Y position, which is the actual um, up and down axis as well. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, I really think that quarter is pretty much the perfect picture in picture size. Let's cover some of the audio options built into the AV matrix. One of the best things about this is if you're a gamer, you're gonna love this. So before I showed you picture in picture, so if we go over to the Super Nintendo, for example, you can't hear it right now, right? Which is how a lot of the other sort of switches work in this particular situation. So if I turn on picture in picture, I'm on screen with the game on screen, but we still can't hear the game, right? So this is the, one of the best things about this. Thanks to the menu, and I'll switch it over to the other view right now, you'll be able to change up the audio. So if I scroll down to audio, I can turn on HDMI 4, which I currently had off. So I'm just gonna back this down until it looks pretty much lower than my voice, which is where it's at right now. And you should be able to hear the game footage and me talking at the same time. So this is Super Ghouls and Ghosts, one of my, I got a love-hate relationship with that game. It's brutal, but it's a lot of fun. But if you're a gamer, you can plug an Xbox or whatever you want into this at 1080p and stream directly out to the web or record via your computer, via OBS or whatever, and just save yourself that hassle. Not only is this perfect for gamers, it's gonna be perfect for anyone doing any type of podcasting. The reason why is you can sync up the audio from a Rodecaster Pro or any sort of sound card that you're using directly into the AV matrix. And I've, I think I've got this right. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I've got this hooked up right now. So you can see over here that I've got a 3.5 millimeter input going to the unit. Then if we take a look on screen again, we can choose if we want the mic level input to be either line or microphone. So I've got it set to line because that will work better for this particular test. Now, I'm gonna switch over to my shotgun mic, which is right here in just a moment. You're not listening to it. You've been listening to this microphone the entire time. Firstly, I have to disable the audio from the camera and then enable the audio from the unit. And then when you see what I do, you'll hear it in just a moment. So here we go. All right, I'm turning off HDMI one. And now you're listening to the shotgun microphone going through the Rodecaster Pro being recorded directly out of this unit all at once. This is without having to resync anything. Now from my tests with my particular setup, I found I needed to set the delay to 110 milliseconds and it's not quite there. Could either be just in front or behind, but it's very, very close. So just by literally changing the option here from 110 to 115, for example, or back to 110 will give you a different kind of delay so you can sync up your voice. I've just tried to eyeball it the best I could. I think it's pretty close, but 
yeah, having this ability to go out of the roadcaster, maybe record in the roadcaster just as a sense of redundancy, but then get it into the AV matrix and then out to the web. This is a perfect podcasting solution. One of the things that AV Matrix got correct was the chroma key support. And I'm about to show you how easy it is. We have a chroma key button on the top here, as well as an on air button. So I'm gonna hit the on air button. Now, as you can see, I've got chroma key support, even though I've got a blue backdrop. I tried to select a color, but it's not lit properly, nor is it really the right color for correct chroma keying. Now you can specify the key source, but the blue's gonna vary a lot and it'll also pull colors out of my eyes and if on my shirt if I take this any further. But at the touch of a button with the right setup, you have chroma key support. Don't judge it based on my crappy setup back here. It has nothing to do with the actual unit. This is just my backdrop color and how much it varies. If I move, you'll see it change, right? So yeah, you're supposed to have the green screens lit up properly and this is a blue screen. But at the touch of a button, you can designate which input you want or a still, for example, that you want the chroma key to attach to thanks to the menu in the unit. And I'll show you that now. From the upstream key option, we can select key source HDMI 1, which I had it on before, which was my main camera. And then we've got HDMI 2, 3, 4 image, color 2, 1, color bar black, and so forth. So you can really customize this unit. If you're a gamer and you've got a correct green screen or chroma key setup, you're gonna really dig what this can do. Now we can store up to 49 images thanks to connecting a USB disc to the unit, which is great if you wanna do some overlay images. We also have a pattern effect that we can just pull up if we so choose, not the most exciting thing in the world. But one of the cool things about it is we can also do a still. So watch this, if I hit the still button, I'll show you where it is first. It's this one right here. If I hit this, <laughs> I can keep talking, but we've got a still shot. This might be handy in different situations depending on your particular circumstance, but I'm gonna unfreeze it right now. So that's a pretty cool little trick. When it comes to straight up functionality, we'll need a reference monitor if you're gonna be doing any sort of real-time monitoring because there's no built-in display. Much like the ATEM Mini and ATEM Mini Pro and the new ones, for example, they don't have screens either built into the unit, but I love the fact I can just push buttons and it's all very intuitive. So to get everything to work, you can just use the front panel and the menu option, but you will need an external monitor to go menu diving, which is one of the limitations of this over something like the Live Pro or the RGB link switches that I reviewed as well. But I think just as straight up functionality goes, this is easily as good or better than the A10 Mini Pro just in terms of tangible buttons and how intuitive it is to use. Let's talk a little bit about who this is for and who might want to avoid this unit. So in terms of who I think the target audience is for this, anyone doing live streaming to YouTube in any capacity, one camera, two cameras, three or four, it's perfect in HD. So if you want something that does 4K, this won't do 4K, but most of them don't unless you go into the pro level stuff, which cost way more. So if you're a gamer or you're doing podcasting, this really is the perfect solution. You can choose how loud you want the game audio. You got picture in picture or dual picture in picture. And you, if you're running a podcast where you don't have a secondary outboard mixer, you can run your microphones into say two different cameras and then get the audio into the AV matrix and then feed that out to the audience and get a really good balance within the unit. Or if you have a Rodecaster Pro, you can plug that in and that 3.5 millimeter input sounds phenomenal. I think it actually has less noise in line level mode than my A10 Mini Pro. One of the things you've got to love about the AV Matrix is you can configure every single parameter. So if you're in a situation where you need something exact to the actual pixel, this will do that no problems at all. You can move everything around on screen. You can change the audio inputs and outputs, which makes it perfect for a studio environment or a YouTube environment, for example, where you've got Two monitor, two reference monitors, one for the multi-view, one for the program out. It can be used in a band situation, maybe going to a projector or something like that as well, which is great, and then be streaming that out to the web. Or if you're doing like church style environments as well, you can set it up so you've got different audio signals going in, you can select which one you want, and then have that going out to maybe an outboard PA system or something. So there's a lot to like about the AV Matrix. I really think it's a powerful unit, and the fact you can offset the audio sync makes it perfect for a lot of people's situations, especially if you want the best audio and video quality. Thanks again, catch you soon.